Now, we're about to get a very rare December hurricane, potentially a major hurricane, while we get back-to-back -back storms coming across the central U.S., the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. So I'm going to update you on all the impacts on what could potentially happen with these two snowstorms coming back-to-back because -back, I'm showing less and less of a chance of a major snowstorm. Now, for the setup, we still have this big high pressure still revolving around, still bringing all this moisture over towards the central U.S., Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, still adding up to a good bit of rainfall. While we get this first system that comes up to the upper Midwest, and then we'll get a back-to-back, -back, a second one also going up to the upper Midwest, showing potentially major snowfall. I know y'all been seeing a lot of that. I'm going to show you what the actual probabilities is of that falling. Plus, over here in Atlantic, we're going to have a major hurricane once again, a rare hurricane popping up in December. And you can see this when you look at surface pressure. So you can see you're starting to get a front-induced low, probably subtropical, becomes tropical, and strengthens up in the Atlantic. While we get this first system that comes to the upper Midwest, not super strong. And then that second one that comes to the upper Midwest, stronger than the first one. Now, first off, you can see that we started getting a strong surface low, subtropical, which means the winds are all along the outside. But later on, it does strengthen up, become a tropical system, and all the winds go around the center. Then it strengthens up, goes to the northern Atlantic, becomes a hurricane, even goes a little bit eastward and becomes a major hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is no threat for the U.S. You can see in 72 hours, just a chance for a tropical depression does form up. And once you go five days, it starts strengthening up and going out to the northeast in the Atlantic. Now, the euro is showing that it will become a hurricane in the Atlantic. Then as we get that first system coming to the upper Midwest, I'll show you what the impacts potentially can be. As it goes out to the northeast of the Atlantic Ocean, it becomes a major hurricane. That first system could come off through the East Coast, become a, another front-induced low, subtropical, and then become tropical. And maybe while this is becoming a major hurricane in the Atlantic, we could get another one forming up. Now, that's the Euro. The GFS says it's only going to be that first one that becomes a hurricane and maybe a major hurricane. The Euro is the one that's showing you could have potentially two forming in the Atlantic Ocean. And that second one could form up while we get that second storm. It is going to be back-to-back -back storms. But from what I'm showing is that the temperatures are just a little too warm to have any kind of major snowfall, even feet of snow. But you can also see here from the Euro that all the wind gusts, very strong winds, very strong systems forming in the Atlantic, is not affecting anybody is going to stay in the Atlantic Ocean. But we still have this prolonged flooding event that is going to happen over the central U.S., the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. And you can see the heavy rates. This dark red is over four inches, and it goes all the way across northern Arkansas, even the northern half of the deep south still. And when we get the second system coming through, because it is going to be back to back, it is going to be very warm temperatures rising way up, and it is going to bring more rainfall to the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. You can see this with the Ural, that it's going to add up to even more rainfall and potentially more for the northeast along the coast. And this will start to bring some flash flooding. So for today, you do have a marginal area, mostly around Tucson. As you go through tomorrow, this is going to change and it's going to start moving towards the central of the U.S., mostly for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. You can see you have it marginal all the way from Nashville to Memphis, all the way around towards Atlanta. You're all in a slight risk for heavy rainfall coming. And as you go through Tuesday, it will be there again. You'll have another marginal area for flash flooding, mostly for Tennessee. So remember, it will go towards Atlanta, Georgia, but then it'll go right back to the northern half where it'll be mostly for Tennessee. Then as you go from Wednesday to Thursday, you're going to have more flash flooding a little bit further to the west because this is a setup on that first big storm. And it is going to put you right in a slight risk for northern Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma for the flash flooding. So it is going to be a few days of flash flooding. Now you can see this setup with the Euros. So as you keep getting this precipitation coming all the way till Tuesday, all the way to Wednesday, then we're going to have this strong setup where we get our first system as this goes all the way to the northeast, still training some more storms. But once you go from Wednesday into Thursday, that's when our storms will produce some severe storms, not super severe where it has a severe outlook, but it will create flash flooding. As this goes to the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, 
spring storms on Thursday and potentially some mixed precipitation and some snow as you go through Friday, mostly for southeastern Minnesota, eastern Iowa, also for Wisconsin and Michigan. Then as you go through Saturday, bring some more snowfall towards the northeast as this low pressure goes off into Atlantic and potentially forms into another tropical or subtropical system. Then right after that, that one-two punch, we are getting a second storm that comes in by Sunday and Monday, bring potential storms to the central U.S. once again, and some maybe some snowfall on the wraparound, a lot of it getting a lot of rainfall. Now, I have seen the videos where people talk about you getting major snowfall feet of snow through all this snowstorms, and what I'm showing is that it isn't going to pan out quite that way. Now the Euro is showing that as we go through Thursday and Friday, it will start bringing some snowfall towards the central U.S., but as it goes into Friday, that it could bring some major snowfall all across Wisconsin, Michigan, even the intercoastal northeast going towards Pennsylvania as you go through Saturday. And what I'm showing is ensembles is that these temperatures are going to be still too warm because we're bringing up all this warm temperatures from the Gulf. And it is going to be some storms, but it's not going to be frozen enough to get this major snowfall. And then right after that, we have that one-two punch of another potential snowstorm happening mainly for Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin as we go up on a high ridge. I'm going to show you the outcome to these snowstorms. Now just to compare, you can see what the Euro is bringing a lot of snowfall and then major snowfall all across the northern tier of the U.S. And you can see with the GFS, it takes it a lot lighter and more northern where it's going to be warmer temperatures and you won't get that much snowfall. Matter of fact, the update is showing even less. And we still have that second storm that's bringing some more potential major snowfall to the upper Midwest. And then we still have that southern storm after that that has potential to bring a long strip of heavy snowfall all the way somewhere by New Mexico, all the way towards the Mid-Atlantic. And I'm showing that that could be potentially true a little further to the south, but a lot less snowfall. And you can see this with the update from the control member of the Euro. So as you go from December 1st all the way to December 11th, that is not bringing a lot of snowfall to the upper Midwest or the Great Lakes. All this gray is all one to two inches. Then as you go forward and you go and look from December 6th through December 16th, you can see that the control member is still seeing major impacts weakening down, but still bringing some snowfall to the deep south. So just going by the first 10 days, and this is your ensembles, this is all your possibilities of outcomes of this first snowstorm. And you can see here with the control member of the GFS that it is bringing a very light amount of snow, pretty much what the control member of the Euro is showing that it's not going to be a major snowstorm. You can even see this with the update from the GFS, the 6Z this morning. That is not showing a lot of snowfall. It's showing just like what we see in the control member of the ensembles. That it's not going to be a heavy snowstorm. It's because of the temperatures. And you can actually see this on the Euro that's showing potential major snowfall. So as you go from Wednesday into Thursday, you start getting your system building up, bringing all these warm temperatures to the north. And as that system goes towards the upper Midwest, most of y'all are in 34 degree temperatures. Way too warm to have any of this stick. Now you could possibly see snowfall. It is going to be colder in the higher elevations, the 850 to lower levels, but it's not going to stick. And then after this storm passes by, it's going to bring the temperatures with it. And everybody is still mostly too warm to get any of this potential major snowfall. And this is by Friday. The temperatures are actually going to move in on Saturday when it gets the coldest. That's why you can get a little bit of snow on the wraparound. These temperatures are coming a day late to get any of this potential major snowstorm. And that second storm, as it comes up to the upper Midwest, look how warm these temperatures are. This is not going to be a major snowstorm coming out of the second one either. It's going to be a lot of warm temperatures coming down and creating this to be rain, mixed precipitation, not a lot of major snow. All the temperatures are over in this direction. This is your temperatures. You can see with your wind chills that it gets a lot colder with your wind chills. So it is going to be cold, 
but it's not going to be cold enough to stick with all this snowfall. You could see it come down, but as far as it staying, that's another story. But GFS is still seeing that we could have a strong system form up by the middle of December and go towards the northeast, maybe bringing some major snowfall with that system. But once again, guys, this is past five days. Take this with a grain of salt. You know how these updates go. Usually it disappears. At the same time, on the southern end of that storm, GFS is saying there's a potential for it to strengthen as it goes towards the east coast. Maybe some 50, 60, even get 70 along the coast wind gusts coming with that system. So we'll keep you updated. Once again, it's still too far to be sure. Anything past two or three days will change. But thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Hope you have a very blessed day today. I know that it's been pushed pretty hard about this super storm that's coming is because once you check out the first one they're going to keep pushing it over and over if they get good views that's pretty much how they do on youtube if if it did good they're going to repeat the title they're going to repeat the scenario and just keep talking about it but you see for yourself with the impacts and the outcomes that more than likely these major snowstorms will not happen but once again, we are going through December, and I want to remind y'all of one thing like I do every single year. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5. Be true to yourself, guys. Hear ye the words of the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, Neither also is it in them to do good. Amen. We are to hold ourselves true to what is the truth and practice as best we can day by day to better ourselves. So a lot of you do believe, a lot of you do say you believe, but yet you still put up that tree. I don't, I don't understand why you do that. I know it's hard for us to let things go. We're raised into certain traditions and ways, and those ways and traditions are wrong. So change them for the next generation. Start with your own home. Do not cut the tree down and deck it with silver and gold and put it in your house and say you are a lover and a follower of the Lord, because that is a lie. Don't do it. You can know them by their fruits. You know the ones that put it up. Their fruits are not of the Lord. I know a lot of you don't want to hear this, but you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say you follow the Lord and follow the heathen's ways. It don't work like that. Start with little footsteps, little baby steps. Don't cut down the tree. All glory does go to Yahweh, our Father in heaven, our God. And he has instructed you not to cut down the tree. Are you going to follow his word? God bless you all. May you make the wisest decisions you can. You will feel so great. I don't do it myself. And every year around this time, we celebrate Mother Mary being pregnant at this time because our Lord was not born at Christmas. You feel so much better knowing that you're not following the ways of the heathen, guys. Don't be the heathen. Why do you think there's so much of the screaming and the gnashing of teeth going in hell? It's not from the non-believers. It's from the people that think that they're doing right and they believe because they know it's true, but they've been doing wrong. And that's why they're pushed away and that's why there's gnashing of the teeth because they thought they were fine. Check yourself, guys. I check mine. Keep it up daily. Stay true to yourself. God bless you all. May you have a very blessed day. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody. Get rid of that tree.